Well, hello everybody. I want to do a little short video for our non-amateur radio friends and kind of let them hear what a radio net sounds like on some on one of the amateur radio bands. Now, what we're listening to right now is a uh, two meter frequency 146.660 and you'll be able to see that in a minute once I turn the camera over that way. <clears throat> this happens to be the Garland Amateur Radio Club and they're having a net tonight. Now what's a net? Well it's a group of amateur radio operators that get together on a certain frequency at a certain time of the day and they talk ham radio. Uh, there are literally dozens and dozens of radio nets going on every day at every conceivable hour of the day and night on some either uh, high frequency, HF frequency, or off of some repeater that might be uh, located right where you live. This repeater that we're listening to right now is located in Garland, Texas, and of course it's got a range of probably 45 miles in all directions. So without further ado, let me kind of readjust the camera and uh, let you hear in that, and I think it'll be kind of self-explanatory. What's already happened is uh, net control, and that's the person running the net, has already taken some check-ins and they're going to be discussing uh, various things. So just have a listen. I'll uh, make some comments from time to time, kind of help you along, and just to give you an idea of what a radio net sounds like. <laughs> Now, again, we're on uh, 146.660. We're working off of this radio right here, this one right here, and this monitor is tied to it. It's got a speaker over here, that, and that's what you're hearing the audio come out of. <clears throat> so, let's turn the volume up and let you hear. Anyway, better luck next time. Anything else out there? He's taking check-ins right now, if there are any. Taking, taking, keepers. If he doesn't get any check-ins, he'll probably move on to the next segment of the net. So just stand by. Uh, W1XWX with a radio question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is KD5BPS. Go ahead, uh, W1XWX with their radio question. Well, I'm kind of an equipment junkie, as you might be able to tell if you ever look at my QRZ page. I'm curious if anyone has gotten their hands on an ICOM 7300, and if they have, uh, what do you think about it? W1XWX. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's probably a question that's on more than one ham's mind right now. How can I get my hands on one of those? <laughs> uh, so let's 
start out as a whole group, does anyone have any personal encounters of the best kind with the mm -hmm. Python 7300? Let's say, no, no. We don't, we don't do it. We're the one that wants to make this, so we shall reject. 75PU. Go ahead, W5PU. Oh, I'm an aircraft user myself, but I've had icons before. Uh, that radio has gotten great reviews by everybody that uses it. I've never used one of them, but uh, I've heard nothing but good, good reports. I'm a diehard aircraft user, so mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll have one of myself here, but uh, I've heard that's a great radio. Okay, well, that's what it does. It does have very brave reviews. Now, I recall going to Hamcom and going to the class by uh, uh, the Flex engineer there, and he had a very interesting slide that I wish I had a copy of, and it showed the noise floor and the phase noise comparisons of a number of different radios, and sure enough, the 7300 was in there, and of course it didn't look quite as good as the Flex 7600, and he wouldn't expect me to put up a slide that would show that, but <laughs> but it still showed that it was pretty good in comparison with some of the older radios, and of course the obvious reason is because it is an SDR. And then I got curious and dug and dug and dug a little further and discovered that they use a 14-bit DAC as the converting unit, whereas the Flex uses a 16-bit DAC. And because of that, I don't know why I'm saying DAC, it's actually an analog to digital converter, so it's an ADC. But the extra two bits uh, the flex, well, in the first place, they cost about five thousand mm -hmm. uh, dollars. That's not the only reason, of course. But, uh, there, there were one compromise that Icon made in, in building the IC seventy three hundred, and some of the rave reviews mentioned that sometimes you did get the. Uh, uh, alarm that says you were over the input range of the ADC, which means you needed to put some more filtering on the front end. But it already has 16 bandpass filters, so it, it would be in band interference that would be overloading the, the ADC. So let me shut up before the timer times me out. And does that answer your question, at least partially, uh, WXW? Here's the well, we're going to forgive the Ellicraft uh, religious uh, part of amateur radio, but, <laughs> but uh, yes, that answered my question. I was hoping somebody had already got their hands on one and has it, had it set up in the shack. I've read the same reviews. I was looking for somebody with real world could tell me... Uh, you know, should I get rid of my ICOM 7000 and go with a 7300 or, or not? Anyway, thank you very much, W1XWX. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm not sure I would do that because if you get rid of your 7000, you get rid of uh, 2 meters and 70 centimeters. So that may be worth keeping it as a uh, backup and as a uh, an extended frequency unit, but yeah, that, that a, lot, a lot of us are uh, <laughs> hesitant to be first adopters of a new technology, for my common at least. Uh, it, it may be a while before some of us spring and get one of those, but <laughs> they definitely have some attractive features. So. Are there any other questions at this point in time? Uh, well. Yeah, thanks for the question. Uh, uh, Joe, and I have to look at my notes here because I can't remember your name yet. Mm -hmm. I'll get there though, maybe. <laughs> uh, are there any other questions at this time? K5QHD VHF repeater. Oh. W5 US. Okay, I got a double with W5GUS. 
So, uh, I jumped in. One reason I jumped in there and asked the question was to get them going. Once you get them going, it seems like then the rest of them will jump in. There's a lot of people are hesitant to talk on the radio. So, trying to break the ice there. Okay, let's do your question and see what we can do to find the answer. I just had a comment on the last question. I was a little late uh, responding. Uh, I did get to use the 7300 in field day. It's a plain old field day. I had to look to make sure that was the one that I did use. I only used it for about 20 or 30 minutes. So, and you just hop on and start using it. So, not a good uh, good data point, but I, I was impressed in the time I used it. Uh, loved the the spectrum scope on the front of it, it makes field day so much easier than not having that. And my gut reaction was it's a lot of radio for that price point, but uh, really didn't have enough time to be a, to give it a thorough investigation. It's what I really thought of it. Uh, but I did make lots of contacts on it, and that, that scope was very helpful in doing that. KF5 OKL, back to that. One more, one Okay, thanks a lot, uh, KF5LKL. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's some more for your data uh, from you, Joe. Somebody actually did use one for 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, Gus, what's your question? This is KD5BTS. Okay, uh, uh, thanks, Stephen. I used a 7300 also for about 20 minutes, and it seemed to work just fine. But I, uh, like LKL, I really didn't have a chance to investigate much uh, during field day. Uh, my question is: someone now asking someone knowledgeable to compare and contrast the uh, Raspberry Pi and the Arduino. Uh, what What are the differences? What are the uh, well? Uh, those are uh, two small full computer boards. One's called an Arduino, the other one is called a Raspberry Pi. A lot of amateur radio operators are uh, programming, uh, buying those. They're very cheap, 35 bucks, 40 bucks. Uh, full computer with inputs, the board. Nothing else fancy about it. And then they use uh, specific uh, programs to make the computer do something, some kind of uh, amateur radio feature, for instance. Uh, they might turn it into what's called an APRS, which is uh, where a radio transmits a GPS signal, and you can actually track the car on a computer screen from another radio. So they that's just one of the uses for it. So let's listen to this. To with the, uh, when we did our amateur uh, the repeater class with uh, uh, the label, and he had one of those as a controller in the repeater controller configuration to do uh, uh, phone pack interfaces and other things. So if anybody else out there that knows more than I do about a Raspberry Pi, which wouldn't take much, is free to come in and tell us what they know about both of them. So this is KD5 BTS, and the question is compare and contrast Raspberry Pi's and Arduino's. 75 to you with a comment. Right, go ahead, W5 team. Well, <laughs> that's one of Campbell's and Orange's. I mean, they're, they're sort of similar in their concept, but one of them had a lot more little plug-in goodies and, and stuff. I have 
I'm a raspberry guy myself. My wife is an Arduino person. She's got a development package and she fools around with it. I, I prefer the raspberry and it's a matter of personal choice. There's so much software available for both of them. Uh, and it'd take an hour to try to compare apples to, you know, apples and oranges. You know, I mean, they're, they're, uh, uh, they're, they're both very little, uh, very small and very easy to, to, uh, to program. And, uh, there's so much stuff available for them. I, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I just like the raspberries better because I'm an old uh, Unix guy. So, and my wife is, uh, She's also a retired network engineer like I am, and uh, she likes the Arduino. So, uh, Arduinos have a lot of things they call shields that, they, that you can plug into them that give you a lot of capability. Arduinos are, uh, their, their development software, I don't like it as much as I do the, uh, the availability for the software and the uh, Raspberry. So, I mean, that's about the best choice I can say if you're, if you're starting out with them because uh, it takes a while to get used to getting it running and all that. Now, Arduino has, I mean, they're, 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 just, they're made by different manufacturers, and I think there's a lot more development stuff. Well, I don't know. I, it's so much for either one. I don't, I don't know how to compare them, 75 to you. Okay, yeah, I think you're probably close to the truth there. There's an awful lot of development software available on the Internet. Uh, the technical capabilities are all documented on the internet, and so it depends on what your application is, which one will fit it better. Uh, does anybody else have a comment on Arduino versus Raspberry Pi? Fifty-five, Jake, the other comment. Okay, I got KG5. Give me your call sign and make your comment. KPL, Kevin. Um, all, all good uh, comments uh, that have occurred uh, uh, previously to what I'm thinking to say, but the Arduino is, is technically a microcontroller. It's not a full fledged, uh, what you call, general purpose CPU. And it doesn't run a full up operating system. Uh, the software runs in a, in a little uh, loop system, and it's not really an OS. Whereas the Raspberry Pi, it runs off. Um, uh, ARM uh, processors, which are the same flavor of processors that run in many cell phones. And it's a full-fledged uh, general-purpose CPU that runs flavors of uh, Linux. So it runs a straight-up full-featured operating system. Can we reset? So the Arduino would be geared for, for uh, those applications that don't require a full-fledged uh, full OS, and they could they also run a lot more power, so you can run a significantly long period of time off like double like batteries. Whereas the Raspberry Pi is going to need a full up, uh, for the most part, uh, line, uh, line in uh, 5 volt uh, OS, I mean, a power supply requires a lot more uh, power, but since it's a full size, full general purpose CPU running a full up Linux operating system, it's much more useful than generic uh, CPU set. Uh, so that's my piece of work. Okay, so uh, let me kind of turn the camera a little bit again. <clears throat> that gives you a pretty fair idea of what a radio net is all about. They're going to keep talking now probably for another 30 minutes or so. I don't want to put you through that. I uh, just wanted to let you uh, listen in on a net just to give you an idea of what it's all about. Anyway, great little hobby uh, to get involved with and a uh, lot more going, you know, people say, what do you do? I do you talk to people all day? Well, yeah, we do. We talk on a party line. So, uh, without any infrastructure, just what's here in my shack is all I need to talk all over the world. So, with that said, as I usually do, I wish you clear skies in 73, and remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. It's still up there. <clears throat> Got to roll my telescope out probably tomorrow. Weather's going to be pretty nice. 
Everybody have a great day. See y'all later.